This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. You're always going to be looking horizontally and it's going to always be not enough, not enough, not enough. All your life, not enough, not enough, not enough. You got to change that. So instead of me looking at the horizontal, on the horizontal plane, I'm going to start looking on the vertical plane. And when I look up, I see Jesus, enough. I see Jesus, enough. I see Jesus, enough. And now I can value myself, value my call, value my life because I'm fulfilling what he wants me to do without comparing myself with everybody else. Renew your mind, your spirit. Renew your life at the 2020 Grace Life Conference. Check out this year's speakers you don't want to miss. Creflo Dollar, Taffy Dollar, Michael T. Smith, Gregory Diddow, and Andrew Womack. Don't miss out on this opportunity to set your life back on track. Come to the 2020 Grace Life Conference. Seats are limited, so register today. This is your world, so let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know you love the city Depression is a result of external pressures, external stuff that's happening in your life, outside, external pressures getting inside of our heart and weighing us down. So it's an external pressure getting inside of your heart, weighing you down. Something from the outside, some issue, some circumstance. Baby need a pair of shoes, got a light bill due, I ain't got no money right now, just lost my job. Some external pressure, uh, uh, pressure coming from the outside and it's internalized. And it wants to get into your heart and weigh you down. What does he say in 1 Peter chapter? Well, I'm, let me go through these and then I'll go through the scriptures. The second perspective. Depression is stress and pressure internalized. Stress and pressure internalized. Now, it's still external. It's still coming from the outside, but now it's in your heart and it's weighing your heart down. You're now internalizing it and it's weighing you down. Have you ever had something on the outside and you just can't let it go and it just, you're trying to, you know, distract yourself from it? But now once it gets on the inside, it's just there. You're constantly thinking about it. It's, you're constantly ro rolling over in your mind. It, it, it's weighing you down. Life feels heavy. It just feels like just, you know, I just need to get rid of this. It's just, you know, and, and, and you're walking with it. And in some cases, you're walking with it for days. Okay, let's look at this last one. And I think this is the one that's going to help us the most. Depression is the feelings that come from thinking thoughts that weigh you down. It's feelings that come from thinking thoughts that weigh you down. Now we got it down to a place where it's workable. Feelings that come from thinking the thoughts that weigh you down. All right, so now we understand from the anatomy of life that I've been teaching you that if depression is a feeling that comes from thoughts that weigh you down, now we're going to be able to diagnose it spiritually a lot better. Why? Because whatever you expose yourself to is going to produce the way you think. Whatever you think about is going to produce how you feel. So however you feel came as a result of what you've been thinking about, came as a result of what you've been exposing yourself to. So ultimately, if I want to deal with how I feel, I got to deal with what I'm exposing myself to. Because whatever I'm exposing myself to is producing the way I think. And whatever I think is producing the way I feel. Now, 
Somebody says, well, why do I need to talk about depression and deal with that? Because you got to deal with how you feel. Because if you don't deal with how you feel, your exposure produces your thinking, your thinking produces how you feel. How you feel now will now determine your decisions. And you don't want to make decisions from negative feelings. Your negative decisions is now going to produce the actions that you take. Now you're going to be doing things from negative decisions that came from negative emotions, that came from negative thinking, that came from negative exposure. You are now acting out on those negative decisions. Those decisions produce your actions. Your actions produce your, your, uh, your uh, habits. You know, we create habits, and then those habits turn right around and create us. We create habits, then those habits create what? Character? And the character brings you to the destination. So where you are this morning is not a mistake. Where you are this morning happened all the way back. It, it started with, what have I been exposing myself to? What are you exposing yourself to? What are you looking at every day? What are you listening to all the time? What are you talking about all? What's the exposure of your life? If, I, if, I, if you were to invite me into your life and, and, you know, and I'm just like a fly on the wall, what would I see that you're exposing yourself to? And people don't even want to pay attention to that. What do you expose yourself to? That's creating my thinking. You got to value yourself enough to dismiss some people from your life. Because if it costs you your peace, what? It's too expensive. And you cannot, you cannot, you cannot spend your peace on other people's drama. Because you're scared that's the only friend you'll ever have. You're an awesome person. God's got somebody that's going to be awesome in your life. You don't have to put up with somebody who don't want to change, who just want to dump drum in your life. When you look on the phone and you see them calling, you have to. <laughs> Only reason you answer because you're bored. <laughs> These are practical things you can do, and you won't do it, and you keep putting up with that stuff. And so what's happening? It's governing your thinking. What are you watching? It's governing your thinking. What are you engaged in, in the booth, in the back, in the corner, in the dark, when it's private, when nobody's around, secretly shielding yourself? So you, what, what are you doing? Because however you think will determine how you feel. And if you feel depressed, there is some thought, there is some way of thinking that's weighing you down and that's what the devil wants to do through guilt and condemnation continue to weigh you down from the past mistakes and the past errors when jesus has already shed his blood to deal with that you can't let it go because you can't believe you subjected yourself to that that you allowed that to happen that you did that that you did this and this some of this stuff happened 20 years ago and you still can't let it go because that way of thinking is weighing you down it's been internalized it is now a part of your life and unless you change the way you think, you are not going to change the way you feel. So how do we deal with depression, the things you've internalized, those external things that have now been internalized, that feeling and that way of thinking that is now a part of your, your heart? How do you deal with it? You have got to change the way you think. You know what it's called? Renewing the mind. You've got to change the way you think. If you're going to change your life, you've got to change the way you think. If you're going to change your life, you got to change the way you think. Now, I'm not talking about going to self-help books. We keep trying to replace God with other things or other people. You know what that's called? Idolatry. The Bible prophesizes about an idolatrous generation. It's a generation where God is no longer first place anymore. It's a generation where people don't seek God first. It's a generation where we seek everything else except God. It's a generation where we put money in God's place. We put other people in God's place. We put other resources in God's place. We put the therapists and the psychologists in God's place. And we continue to try to use other things to replace God 
And I am telling you, how long is it going to take before you realize that there are only certain things that only God can do? Only certain things that God can do. And you keep trying, you keep trying your best. And it, 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 what you're doing only will, will, it'll only give you temporary results. It'll give you temporary results. But God will deal with the very root of the issue. God wants you to have peace. God wants you to have joy. He wants you to have life. He wants you to have it more abundantly. But you won't, you won't put him first place. You continue to operate in idolatry. You, you, I'm, I'm not going to go to know God. And then you tell people why. Because I've been hurt. And church hurt is the very reason why a bunch of idolatry has taken place. Now, here's what the Bible says. Let's get some scriptures in here now. First, first Peter chapter 1, verse 5 First, verse, first Peter chapter, excuse me, 5, verse 7. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 7. Now, let's see what the Word says about all this stuff. Do you, do you have a pretty good feel of what this is that we're dealing with? These are feelings that weigh you down in the area of your emotions, trying to depress you and move you away from the will of God for your life. You know, the Bible says Jesus was depressed. Remember I showed you that? But he didn't let the depression win. Let's read verse 7 out loud together. Ready to read. Casting all your care upon him. How many of you have ever had care? That should be everybody in the room. Everybody, if you didn't raise your hands, that's a lying devil on you right now. Everybody in here has had care. See, that's what I'm, that's what I'm talking about. Well, we in church, I ain't going to let them know I had nothing. Everybody already know you had care. You got care now. You sitting up here worried about how long I'm going to preach. <laughs> Casting all your care upon him, casting all your care upon him, casting all your care upon him. Now forget about the second part. You got to do the first part first. Casting all your care upon him. When was the last time you took a care in your life and said, God, I cast this care on you because I know you care for me. I'm giving this to you, God, because I know you care for me. I'm not going to carry this. I'm not going to think about it. No, no, no. I'm not thinking about that again. I'm casting it on the Lord. And every time the thought of it come up, say, no, that's God's business now. And it comes up again, nope, I've already cast it on the Lord. And it's going to keep coming. You know, you, you got some kind of sickness or disease, and, and, and then the care of it comes, and you're thinking, and, and you say, God, I, I cast the care of this sickness on you. And then the devil come out, you're going to die. Uh-uh, that's God's business right now. And by the way, I'm, 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 I'm going to live and not die. And, and you cast it. You cast it. Now, somebody says, well, how many times you got to cast it? As many times as you need to cast it. <laughs> Refuse to carry it. See, these are the answers. That's not my issue. My issue is, this is so simple. Excuse my English. Is you going to do it? <laughs> that, it's just so simple. Is you going to do it? You sit up here, you're saying, yes, I agree, amen. But when the care comes, will you cast it? Will you open your mouth and say, no, I'm not carrying this care. I know what it will do to me. I'm not carrying it. I'm casting it. God, I'm casting this care on you right now in the name of Jesus. Do this. Take your right hands. Ball it up like a fist. On the inside, you just put all your care. All your care is in there, all right? All of it's in there, all right? Now, put your hand back like you're getting ready to throw it. All right, now release it. Let me duck, all right? And <laughs> I don't want all that stuff in my life. <laughs> Get rid of it. If you find that you are carrying care, get rid of it. You shouldn't go to bed, bed sad and wake up sad. Get rid of it. Now, does that mean I'm going to feel perfect emotionally at that time? Well, no, not at that time unless you replace what you're thinking about. That's why it's so important to get in the Word. Replace what you're thinking about with the Word of God. What, the, what does the Word have to say about that care you just cast? Well, I don't know where it is in the Bible. Dude, you got an iPhone? You got a phone? Ask Siri. 
Siri will give you scriptures. Siri will give you scriptures. Siri, Siri, give me, his, give me all the scriptures in the Bible that talk about freedom from worry. Siri say, here's what I found. <laughs> so what are you going to tell God when you get, Lord, I wanted, to, I wanted to cast my care on you and think on your scripture, but I couldn't find it. God said, I gave you Siri, Google, all them things you talk with. I gave you all that. All you had to do is ask them. You wouldn't ask me, but at least you could have asked Siri and them. <laughs> we really, what, what excuse do you have? Cast all your care on him because he cares for you. Now look at Hebrews 13 and 5. Hebrews 13 and 5. Now, we're going to be on this for a couple of weeks because depression is a big item. Hebrews chapter 13 to 5. Let your conversations be without covetousness. He's saying here your lifestyle, don't let it, let your life, have a lifestyle that's, that's not full of covetousness, greed, or the area of idolatry where you have said money is first place and not God. Forget a God. I need the money. You know, that's what the spirit of mammon wants to do. Mammon is a demonic spirit that wants to convince you to trust money and not God. Mammon says, don't trust God and don't need God. You have money, trust it. And the sad thing about it, you work so hard, you sacrifice, you do all this stupid stuff so you can get to this particular point in life, and then you get a certain financial position in life, and you get all the stuff you ever wanted and dreamed of. You know, here's the sad part. And when you get there, you realize, wow, I was deceived. It ain't here. You got a lot of money. You can buy a $10,000 suit, but you ain't even got no friends to tell you you sharp. You finally got the car you want, but don't nobody want to ride with you. <laughs> you got a beautiful house that you haunt because don't nobody want to come see you. Right. And you realize, wow, life is a sum total of who you spend it with. It's relationships. And you beat everybody up trying to rise to the top financially, only to find out that ain't where it is. And on the way, you pushed everybody out the way because that was the single focus. Yeah, God wants you to prosper. God wants you to have enough money to do what you want to do. But at the expense of replacing him with your endeavor to try to get there, I don't know, it ain't worth it. Because at the end of the day, when you owe and your knee hurt, and you can't go in the back and, <laughs> and get your clothes on. I want to know I got some people that I can call to help me. <laughs> hey, how you doing now? I need to come help me get the knee up here right quick. <laughs> <laughs> Let your conversations be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. You know, the Bible says godliness with contentment will produce great gain. But what happens, it's so hard for us to be content because we keep looking at the horizontal plane of life. What does that mean? You can't hardly enjoy life because you keep look, looking, comparing yourself with the horizontal. When you think you're all right, you look down there and say, oh, man, look what they got. Oh, wow, look what's going on with them. Quit trying to be a broke expression of somebody else and learn how to just be who God called you to be. A broke imitation of somebody else. So what happens? You're always going to be looking horizontally and it's going to always be not enough, not enough, not enough. All your life, not enough, not enough, not enough. You got to change that. So instead of me looking at the horizontal, on the horizontal plane, I'm going to start looking on the vertical plane. And when I look up, I see Jesus enough. I see Jesus enough. I see Jesus enough. And now I can value myself, value my call, value my life because I'm fulfilling what he wants me to do, 
without comparing myself with everybody else. You know, you can get depressed because you can look on the horizontal plane and say, dog, when is it going to happen for me? That's right. That's right. When mine going to come? And yours already there. But you're so busy trying to be like what you see in the horizontal, you won't pay attention and value who you are. Don't you know you got to be okay with you before it's going to be okay in your life? And as long as it's not okay with you, you're going to always be struggling to try to meet the expectations and standards of the Joneses. Forget the Joneses. I told you the other day, I'll never be 6'8". Man, it would have been nice to have been 6'8". Walk out here and just towel over y'all. But you, um, you got to be okay with who you are. Somehow, you got to look in the mirror and be okay with who you are. Yeah, but Pastor, I'm just a little overweight. Yeah, but your husband love all that. <laughs> he loved it. And you looking at some billboard, some Photoshop billboard, <laughs> or some girl who been painted. She don't look like that for real. If you see it in person, say, take your makeup off. <laughs> and by the way, if you're about to get married, take your makeup off. That man need to see what he really married. <laughs> Don't marry a mask. <laughs> Don't marry a mask. Take your makeup off. Take your hair unit off. Take your eyelashes off. <laughs> if you order the butt, take the butt off. Let the man see. Let him see what he married. He need to see what he got. <laughs> that does not need to be revealed on honeymoon. That could be a scary thing. <laughs> She start taking stuff off, take a leg off, start hopping at you around the bed. <laughs> come on, baby, come on. Anybody got time for all that? <laughs> the church has become that phony. That's why I'm talking to you about this. We got to get rid of the phoniness, and we've got to appreciate and embrace the authentic and see what God has made. See the beauty of what God has made. Some of y'all ain't laughed this much in so long. Some of y'all scared to laugh. We in church, it's all right to laugh. <laughs> he said, be content with such things as you have, for he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Now, I want to show you this in the Amplified real quick. Let your character or your moral disposition be free from the love of money. What is the love of money? The love of money is when you trust it more than you trust God. It is when it is first place and God is no longer first place. He said, including greed, avarice, lust, craving for earthly possessions. Why is he mentioning this? This is the very cause of the, the, the thinking and the thoughts that are internalized because of the lack thereof or not having enough and can't pay this and can't do that. Says your life and character shouldn't be put, put up with all that. And craving for earthly possessions and be satisfied with your present circumstances and with what you have. Why should I be satisfied with my present circumstance and what I have? He's going to tell you, for he, God, listen to this, guys, himself has said, I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. I will not, I will not. I will not in any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake, nor let you down, nor relax my hold on you. Assuredly not. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said he's not going to relax his hold on you. He's not going to let you down. He's not going to fail you. He's not going to leave you. Praise God. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and say, it's handled. It's handled. Now, the ultimate area that we're going to have to deal with to defeat and win over depression is we've got to get to the point where we've got to deal with those thoughts. 
If you don't deal with the way you, you think, you're not gonna deal with the way you feel. So you gotta deal with how you're thinking. In a world full of uncertainty and in the midst of unprecedented global events, the pressures of life can be overwhelming and lead to internal depression. But Christ has called us to overcome and win our internal and external battles. That's why we have designed a series just for you. You don't have to choose depression. You can choose your authority over depression and use your faith to defeat it and keep it out of your life. When you know how to properly divide the word, you know how to properly use the word. During these challenging times, boost your faith and fight the good fight against depression, anxiety, and fear with the five message series delivered from depression for just $30. Also available in this one-time offer is the delivered from depression series bundled with the powerful classic book, Winning in Troubled Times. Receive this $50 power pack for just 40 US dollars. Call today or visit the website on the screen to order. Renew your mind, your spirit, renew your life at the 2020 Grace Life Conference. Check out this year's speakers you don't want to miss. Creflo Dollar. You gotta have your own relationship with Jesus. Taffy Dollar. I receive the gift of grace. Michael T. Smith. Let me give you news, you are not in the flesh. Gregory Dittow. It's the equalizer of every human being. And Andrew Womack. Being sensitive to the Lord can change your life. Your life will never be the same again. It changed your mind, heart open. It's just life-changing experience. Can't miss it. Don't miss out on this opportunity to set your life back on track. Come to the 2020 Grace Life Conference at the World Dome in College Park, Georgia, July 6th through the 10th. Register by texting Grace Life to 51555 or visiting creflodollarministries.org. Seats are limited, so register today. Folks, by the grace of God, we feed and clothe people, provide houses, visit hospitals and prisons, and do so, so much more. Every time you make a financial donation to support us, you do these things as well. The tangible relief we provide to God's precious people is only possible because of your faithful support. Thank you for supporting us as we strive to reach a lost and dying world for the Lord Jesus Christ. If God has placed it on your heart to support the vision of this ministry to reach the world with the gospel of grace, you may call in to make your financial donations or log on to creflodollarministries.org. God bless you. Your generosity allows us to make a difference in the lives of people all over the world. Through Creflo Dollar Global Missions, we are providing food, clothing, crucial supplies, and the Word of God to people in the most remote regions of the world. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe.